And once you have found it, let's all stand as we read the Word of God, Romans chapter number 5. We're going to read several verses, so just kind of go along with me. Romans chapter 5, it's in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Romans chapter 5. And if you have it, give me a good strong amen. Amen. Scripture says in Romans chapter 5 verse 1, Therefore, being justified... By, what's the next word? Faith. Faith. We have peace with who? God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we also have access by what? Faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, patience experience, experience hope. Hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Now drop down, if you would, to verse 17. Notice what it says. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment, notice judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Well, there's a lot of judicial words mentioned in this verse right here. Then notice what he says. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound But where sin abounded, boy, I love this, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Now drop down to Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. And notice what it says right here. For the wages of sin, I want to talk to you, I want to take all these verses. I want, to, I, want you, I want you to listen to me. I want to need your brain a little bit this morning. And um, so you can't go to sleep. Um, I want to talk to you about this topic, why you don't enjoy your Christian life. Why you don't enjoy your Christian life. You know what's sad? There are people who say they don't enjoy, they don't enjoy their Christian life. That's, a, that's sad. Man, when I got, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I, I love it. But I want to show you why, and I believe it will be a help to you. Father, take these next few minutes. And Lord, allow me to be a help to thy people I realize in this room there are many, many different needs. I cannot meet every one of these needs. But Holy Spirit, I know that you can. So I pray that you'd use me simply as your mouthpiece. And Holy Spirit, would you bring conviction upon the lost that they would get saved. And then conviction on those, every one of us as saved, that we would have a better relationship with thee, I pray. But actually, better fellowship with thee, I ask. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. In the Garden of Eden, let me, if I can, go all the way back to the Garden of Eden. I want you to follow me carefully. You go all the way back to the Garden of Eden. God created man a perfect being with no sin in their life. Man knew no sin. So because then at that time, back in the Garden of Eden, every day, God would come down, the Bible says, in the cool of the day. Now, what's the cool of the day? I believe the cool of the day is in the early morning, right before the sun pops up um, is when the cool of the day. If you ever notice your, uh, you ever notice the temperature, um, it's a certain temperature, and then right before the sun comes up, temperature drops just a little bit, cool of the day. So, so God would meet with them in the cool of the day. And they had sweet fellowship with one another because there, there, sin, there was no sin between them and God. But something happened. We know the story. Uh, um, Satan came. And, and through that serpent beguiled Eve, the scripture says, and then Adam took of that fruit, and when he ate of that fruit, sin entered into the world. Romans 5, 12, the scripture says, for as by, for, for by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so that death has passed upon all men, for that all are sinners. God says, by Adam, sin entered into the world. Now we have a problem. Now that sin has entered into the world, man can no longer have a relationship with God, much less fellowship. You with me so far? 
Two different words, two different words right there. So follow me very carefully because I'm going down to those two words. So I want, so my relationship is not there. If I don't have relationship, I cannot have fellowship. I, you say, yeah, but I want to have fellowship with them. Well, first of all, you have to establish relationship. If I want to have a relationship, a fellowship with Brother Turk over there, I've got to, first of all, establish a relationship. I cannot have fellowship without relationship. So I've got to, I've got to get a relationship. Well, the problem was sin entered the world. So God provided a way for man to reestablish that relationship. Let's go through that, first of all. So the first thing that God did was he gave us the law. Okay? What does the law do? The law shows me I am a sinner. So follow me very carefully. It does not, I cannot, it shows me I'm insufficient enough of myself to get myself to heaven. So I want to let you be the law. You come stand here. You're the law. Now you're the law. Now what this, all this does, this tells me I cannot get to heaven by myself. By the way, neither can you. Nobody can get to heaven by themselves. You say, I'm a pretty good person. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. If you break the law one time, you're on your way to hell. Now, this is what I know. God says that even a baby comes into the world speaking lies. Now, get this now. So that means that of myself, I had, I've talked to a few people, not a lot, a few people that say, I've always been saved. No, you've not always been saved. You've always been a sinner, but you've not always been saved. And so the fact is, because this is the who talked about, this is the law. The law shows me I can't make it by myself. Um, God says, thou shalt not kill. I've not killed anybody. Uh, thou, shalt, thou shalt not bear false witness. Oh, man, I wish God wouldn't have said that, because that's lying. That's lying. Now, I know this. Revelation 21.8 says that all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with Fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So the fact that, you say, but I've not told, I've told a white lie. Can I help you out? God doesn't color lies. It's either a lie or it's not. Or it's not. I just, I hate to tell, I hate to break it. I, my, my grandmother used to say, you get those little white marks. I have one right there. You see that? And um, you're the law. You see that right there? Yeah. And that, my, my grandmother used to say that, that little white mark right there in your nails means you told a white lie. So I don't know what a white lie is. I don't know what a black lie is. I know when I told a lie as a kid, I got a spanking for either one. It didn't matter. And my mama didn't say, which one did you tell? A white one or a black one? No, she, you told a lie. Now get this now. One lie, it's, it, this tells me I'm insufficient. Because it separates me from God. And let's see who do I want to pick as God. Um, Brother Hall, go ahead. I'll let you, boy, this is a rare thing. And, uh, and so this is really rare. But anyway, don't even let it go to your head because I'll let you fall. But anyway, and so, so that's God. Now, I want to have relationship with him. But I can't because the law says right here, I've sinned. I've sinned. Now, because there's a law, God says, I want this restored. Do you love me? Yeah. You're, you're who? You're who? I don't say don't do that. But anyway, no, you're God. Now, now I'm staying away from there. Lightning's coming down. But, but he's God. Now, get this now. He's God. And something's come between me and God. It's called what? Sin. Because the law showed me I'm a sinner. Right. Now, because I've, a sin, I've sinned, I've broken the law. Get this now. Whenever you break a law, there's got to be a punishment. Has to be a punishment. That means now we've got a second word, justice. Justice says someone's got to pay for the sin you broke. Justice says to me, you can't get to God unless you pay for the sin that you committed. Well, what do I have to do? Romans 6, 23, for the wage of sin is what? Death. Someone's got to die. So if I die without my sin being paid for, you mean to tell me I would go to a devil's hell? Now, get this now. So in order to get saved, I got to first of all have a what? Have the? Talk to me now. I got to have the? Everybody, I got to have the? Law and the law shows me I am a what sinner. Now there comes another word called what justice. Justice tells me the wages of sin is death. Someone's got to die. Now that brings up another word. Mercy. I've got. I, I need mercy. 
I need, what is mercy? Mercy is not giving me what I do deserve. So follow me now. First of all, we have the, talked about, we have the law. The law shows me I'm a sinner. Then all of a sudden, what steps in? Justice. Justice says sin has to be paid for. Then there comes another word in called what? Mercy. That's not giving me what I do deserve. What do I deserve? I deserve to go to where? Hell, yeah. I deserve to go to hell. But there's a God in heaven that loves me enough. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, you listen to me. Oh, God loved me enough. God says, I've got mercy right here. I've got mercy. I will save your soul. But he says, I've got to, get, I've got to bring something else in. I've got to bring in grace. Come up here, Grace. And um, you didn't know your name was Grace, did you? <laughs> so, so this is what? This is grace. So first of all, and let's, let's do review here. I, 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 first of all, I, I want a relationship with God over there. God says you can't because this right here is the what? Law. And the law has shown me I'm a what? Now, if you're a sinner in here this morning, would you raise your hand? My hand's up. If your hand's not up, you're lying right now. So everybody's hand. Now, some of you need to raise too. But anyway, but, but now you're, you're a sinner. Now, because I've sinned, justice has stepped in. Justice says I have to what? i got to go to hell. Someone's got to what? Die. Someone's got to die for me. Someone's got to die. Oh, but I can't die for myself. If I die for myself, I go straight to hell. Well, but justice, can't we just get baptized? Won't? Justice, how about if I join a church? Well, that, man, you're mean. Hey, Justice, how about if I just sing in the choir? No. How about if I pastor a church? No. Someone's got a what? Die. Man, you know what that means? That means I need what? Mercy. I need somebody to be merciful to me to say I will make, I, I, I've got a way that this payment can be made. And that person also has to have what? Grace. What's grace? Giving me what I don't deserve. What don't I deserve? I don't deserve this ugly guy right here, the payment. The payment, this is justice. Justice says sin has to be paid for. So because sin has to be paid for, I've got to have somebody step in. Brother Brian, come up here. You're going to represent Jesus Christ. Go over there. And let me tell you what Jesus did. Jesus says, I'll leave heaven. And I'll come and make this payment for you. Would you make the payment for me? Go ahead. There you go. Just this. Right. There you go. He made the payment for me with his own life. He's made this. He has, get this now. He's, he's, he's appeased God's, God's justice. Which means now God can give me mercy and God can allow me, it can be what? Gracious for me so I can have a relationship with God. Now that means I need one more word. Come here, Brother Pike. Brother Pike is going to represent faith. I want you to go stand right here. I want you to stand right here, right there. So let's have a little review. You ready? This represents who? Law. Law. Shows me I'm a what? Sinner. Sinner. Come on, get in front of these guys. And this is what? Sinner. Justice. Justice says because I've sinned, I've, somebody's got to what? Yeah. Die. And if I die in my sin, I go to where? Yeah. Hell. But then God says I've got something over here called what? Mercy. That's not, that's, getting, that's not giving me what I deserve. What do I deserve? I deserve to go to hell. But God says I want to give you something else. And that's called what? grace. He says, I want to give you something called salvation. He says now, now Jesus Christ says, I will make that payment for you. And now Jesus says to me, he says, if you want to go to heaven by faith, you got to trust my payment. By faith, I got to trust Christ's payment. So I have a choice this morning. My choice is try to pay for it myself and say, I don't want Christ to make my payment. And if that happens, get this now, I go to where? Hell. 
But if I accept Christ's payment, Christ steps in my place. He's my sacrifice. He's my payment. He paid for all sin, and by faith, I trust Jesus' payment. All of a sudden, I find mercy. All of a sudden, I get grace. All of a sudden, now, get this now, I have a relationship with God. Thank you, man. You can be seated. Now, I want you to follow me. That's what it takes to get saved. That's what it takes to get saved. Now, something happens the moment you get saved. Something happens. The first thing that happens is a word called justification. Justification. Say that word with me. Justification. Say it again. It is justification. What does justification say? Penalty has been paid. Penalty has been paid. So I accept Christ's payment on Calvary. My penalty for hell has been paid by who? By Jesus Christ. Now get this now. Not only do I get justification, I get something else. I get eternal life. Eternal life. What is that? What is that? He said, how do you get that? Okay. He says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life. How, what kind of life? Eternal. Does he say conditional? Yes or no? No. He says what kind? Eternal. How long is eternal last for? Forever. Let me, let me ask you. How long is eternal last for? Forever. Does that mean till the day I die? Wow. You're pretty smart. Hey, hey. How long is eternal last for? Forever. So if I get this gift, that means I can, I can have this gift forever? Wow. Why? Because my payment has been justified. So I'm not saved one day. Listen now. I don't get saved one day and get lost the next day because I did something wrong. Because how many of my sins got paid for? All of them. All of them. Every sin paid for by Jesus Christ. I'm justified in the eyes of God. He's given me mercy and grace. And by grace are you saved through faith. I, I put that faith in Christ. And God was gracious enough to give me eternal life so I can go to heaven. Amen. Amen. Now, all of those things. Get up here, God. Gives me. A relationship. Amen. Yeah. I become a child of God the very second I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Amen. Get this now. God said, listen now, I don't get the relationship because of me. I get the relationship because of who? Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, this relationship here, I want you to get this now. This relationship allows me to have a, something else called fellowship. Get right here. Now, this is why people don't enjoy the Christian life. When I get saved, will I ever lose relationship? Talk to me now. Yes or no? No. This is always here. I am always going to be a child of God. That's why you don't have, if you've gotten saved, you don't have to keep on raising your hand, I'm, I'm getting saved. Now, if you're not saved, you need to get saved. If you're not saved, you've just heard the gospel right now, this morning, enough to get saved. Now, I want you to listen to me. That means that this morning, you have a choice to, to try to appease the justice of God yourself or accept Christ's payment and let him justify you and you can go to heaven. Now, once I accept Christ's payment, I get a relationship. Now, I also have fellowship. Fellowship is what determines how much I enjoy relationship. I want you to listen to me. As long as I am right here, I have sweet fellowship with God. Get this now. But when I start doing wrong, get this now, I stray from God, and the more, the further I get from God, the less I enjoy this. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There's a reason why some people don't enjoy the Christian life, and it's because you're revealing your fellowship. You're not living the way that God wants you to live, and because of that, you're not enjoying the relationship you're supposed to enjoy by getting saved. Listen, 
I want to have a good fellow. Okay, illustration. I was born into the Domley family. I did nothing to be born into the Domley family. That was all mom and dad. My relationship with mom and dad was determined because of mom and dad. My fellowship with mom and dad all determined by how I lived according to their rules. Now, if I lived good with my mom and dad, I lived according to the rules. I enjoyed mom and dad. Get this now. Listen, teenager. Oh, but when I hated mom and dad, it's because I was breaking their rules. You with me so far? And I, 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 man, I can't believe and what's, it. It hurt my fellowship. And when my mama spanked me, get this now, I didn't, I didn't really enjoy that relationship. Well, what was my mama trying to do? She was trying to draw me closer back so we could enjoy each other. And can I say this morning, there's people here this morning. I'm glad you're in church this morning. But I'm telling you right now, some of you are not enjoying your Christian walk with God because you strayed from what you're supposed to be. You're living your own life and your fellowship with God is in direct contradiction to what God wants you to live. And that's why you don't enjoy this over here. You can blame it on people. You can blame it on mom and dad. You can blame it on the preacher. You can blame it on the environment. You can blame it on your surroundings. But at the end of the day, my fellowship with God is totally dependent upon how I live according to God's word. Thank you. So if I don't read God's word daily, I'm not going to enjoy it. That's why some of you look at this and you, I, I, don't even, I don't enjoy reading the Word of God. You know why? You're so far over here. You're not enjoying the relationship with God. Now, now let me ask you a question. Why would you not enjoy a relationship with God? Something's come in your life that's keeping you from enjoying that relationship with God. Something has drawn you away from God and caused your fellowship to be at odds with God. Now, it's not God's fault. It's my fault. If I choose to sin, I'm the one who did it. God didn't make me do it. Now, I'm talking to people this morning. You come, many of you come every Sunday morning, and you're in church. But you say, I don't even enjoy, I just come because I feel like I have to. Now, if that's your mentality, can I tell you right now, that's because you're way over here. Those who are closer to God enjoy being in church. Enjoy being where God wants us to be because we're fed the word of God. We're encouraged from the word of God. We're helped by the word of God. But when I don't enjoy church, the further I get from God, the farther I get over here, the less I enjoy that relationship right there. And I've come this morning saying, ladies and gentlemen, it's time God's people take out whatever has pulled us away from God to say that is not worth um, um, sacrificing enjoying the relationship God wants me to have. Let me ask you a question. Do you really think a Sunday night football game is better than God? Don't get quiet now. Yeah. Starting to meddle. Yeah. We have church on Sunday night. And God says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Amen. But some allow a job. Some allow a game. Right. Some allow laziness. Right. Some allow other things to keep them from God and you're hurting yourself. That's why God says draw nigh to God and he'll what? Draw nigh to you. God says you take that step. The more you take that step, the more it's going to feel like, get this now, it's going to feel like God's getting closer and he is because you're pulling yourself towards God and God pulls towards you. It comes down to simply this. If I want to enjoy relationship. then I need to get my fellowship right. If I get my fellowship, the more I get my fellowship right, the more I enjoy the relationship I have with God. Look at Israel. 
Every time they did something wrong, they did not enjoy God. But when they got right, they enjoyed. That's what Psalm 136 is. When God says, for the mercy of the Lord endureth forever. They would gotten right with God and they saw time after time after time. After time, they got right with God and they said, the mercy of the Lord endureth forever. He parted the Red Sea. The mercy of the Lord endureth forever. He gave us a sun to rule the day. The mercy of the Lord endureth forever. Hey, he gave us a, he gave us a cloud, a, a pillar of fire by night. The mercy of the Lord endureth forever. A cloud by day. Mercy of the Lord endureth forever. Water from the rock. I'm a mercy of the Lord endureth forever. Manna every day. Mercy of the Lord endureth forever. But every time they strayed from God, oh, I can't believe that God's giving us this manna every day. What's wrong with God? No, it's not God. It's you. It's your heart. So I bring the mirror to you this morning. And I ask you to look into the spiritual mirror of your heart. And ask you, what's hindering your relationship? You know, I can look in a mirror. I'm trying to lose weight. Let's say I'm trying to lose weight. I can look in the mirror. And I can say, I'm, I'm fat. And I, my belly's sticking out. And I, man, man, what's wrong with this mirror? Now, it's not the mirror's fault that I'm fat. Come on now. I like the mirror when I lose weight. It's not the mirror's fault. We're blaming God for what we have done. I look in the mirror and the mirror is God's word that says, hey, this is what's coming between you and me. Now it's time that some of you this morning stop messing around with God. You're wasting a life that you can enjoy a relationship with God. Yeah. We still have to work in the world. We still have to pay our bills. We still have to, we still have trouble. But we can enjoy our relationship yeah. because we have sweet fellowship. Amen. But when that fellowship is gone and you're way over here, you hate the relationship. Let me illustrate. A married couple, they get married. They enjoy, the, they, they think that they're going to live happily ever after. And then after about two or three months, reality sets in. We're not like each other. Man, I didn't realize there's a lot of these things going on. And all of a sudden, your relationship, all of a sudden, you start bumping heads a little bit. And all of a sudden, and if you're not careful, and what happens, they get married. And then sometimes, maybe a man or maybe a woman, they, they, they get in another relationship with someone else while they're still um, married over here. And now everything they see with their spouse is wrong. And it's not the spouse, it's them who got in a relationship with something else. Listen to me. It's what we've got to clean up is that it's not the relationship is not the problem. The fellowship is. Let's get our fellowship right with God. Now, if you don't have the relationship this morning, if you're not saved, God has given you a law to show you that you're a what? Sinner. And you are insufficient of yourself to pay for your own sins because justice says the wages of sin is what? Death. Someone's got to die. But then, thank God, God from heaven says, I've got something called mercy. I've got something called grace. Just sit down right here, son. Son, sit down. This isn't time to move. This is church time. You're okay. Thank you. And so you're, you're over here, and, you, and God's got grace, and God's got mercy. And God says, I, want to, I, I so badly want you to give it to you. But you've got to accept the payment that my son gave you. And if you'll accept that payment, you can have the relationship. You can get baptized without accepting Christ's payment. And that baptism means nothing. You go to church without Christ's payment. That payment means nothing. You've got to accept Christ by faith. And that's what establishes the relationship. And then from that day forward, I try to live my life trying to keep close to God. Fellowship. Why don't I enjoy my Christian walk? It's because I've allowed myself to stray from the one who I'm having the relationship with. Something's come between me and God. So all I've got to do, I'll let you be God real quick. Come here. So I, 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 have the, I got saved, but then I let something come between me and God. Come on. 
and now I'm not enjoying it. Yeah. And, that, and the more things that come between me and God, yeah. the less I enjoy the relationship. Sorry. Now, I'm still saved. Yeah. But I'm not enjoying it. Yeah. Amen. So how am I going to get saved? If we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to what? Forgive us. And to what? Cleanse us. God says, God, I, I'm sorry. I've let this come between you and me. I'm sorry. We forget. Yeah. I'm sorry about this right here. I've let this guy with an orange tie. I'm sorry. I've let this ugliest guy to come between us. And God says, as soon as you'll just come and confess it, I'll, I'll take you back. I'll take you back. Man says, okay, now you need to get in front of everybody and tell everybody. God says, you just confess it to me. God says, I'll take you back like that. Now, why wouldn't you want to have a God like that as your Savior? Huh? You get this God as your Savior by accepting Christ. and His payment so that your sins are justified in the eyes of God. And now I can go to heaven because by faith I trusted Christ. Father, this morning, a very simple sermon this morning, very simple. Yet, we've seen what allows us to get saved, and then we see what kind of hinders our relationship. It's our fellowship is in the wrong place. We've allowed something to come between us and you that hinders that relationship. Oh, God, this morning, would you help us today? Those who are saved, Holy Spirit, reveal to us what is in between us and God. And those who are not saved, help them to get saved. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed.